Which transmissions are safe and which ones should you avoid? That's what we're going to find out. Welcome to Car Help Corner where we help you the consumer master the process of car buying and car ownership. Buying a new vehicle can seem quite confusing given how many types of different engines and transmissions exist these days. Well, for this video, I'm going to compare the different types of common transmissions, go through the pros and cons of each one, how to maintain them properly, whether they are reliable or not, or whether you should avoid them to dodge major problems. So let's begin with one of the most controversial types of transmissions, which is the CVT. CVT stands for Continuously Variable Transmission. Instead of gears, a conventional CVT uses a metal belt that circulates between a pair of pulleys. The benefit of this design is that it can improve fuel economy and creates a smooth, seamless feel as you accelerate or decelerate. CVTs have become very common across the auto industry and most automakers now use them, especially on their smaller vehicles. There are, however, some potential drawbacks to this type of transmission. The first one being potential reliability. Many of the early CVTs were very problematic and sometimes failure prone. Honda, Subaru, Hyundai and Kia and others all had problems with their CVTs when they were first introduced. Thankfully though, most of these automakers have sorted out these problems. And over the past decade or so, CVT reliability has improved significantly to the point where it really isn't a major concern for these brands. The one major exception to this, however, is Nissan, which uses CVTs made by Jatco, which is infamous for its high failure rate. Nissan has been using Jatco CVTs for over two decades, and during most of that period, premature CVT failure has become very common. And despite claiming that Nissan has made updates to their CVT design over the years, especially within the past four to five years, CVT failures continue to occur even on the newer Nissan models, which just goes to show how fragile these transmissions can be. Failures with less than 100,000 miles or 160,000 kilometers happen fairly often. And the problem with CVTs is that they are very difficult to repair or rebuild. Usually, the only solution if you have a failed CVT is to replace it with a brand new transmission, which can easily cost around $8,000. Servicing the CVT with more frequent than normal fluid changes can prolong the lifespan, and it is recommended to change the CVT fluid roughly every 30,000 miles or 50,000 kilometers to be on the safe side. But regardless, the reality is, is that Jatco CVTs are inherently weak and fragile by design. To be on the safe side, it is best to only buy a vehicle with a CVT from a brand that has proven reliability. Honda, Subaru, and Toyota have been using CVTs on some of their models for over a decade now and they seem to have figured out how to make them stronger and last longer. So overall, I have to give the conventional CVT a B minus rating from these brands. But if it's a Nissan CVT, well, I have to give that one an F rating. Now let's move on to the next type of transmission, which is the DCT or dual clutch transmission. The DCT is a form of an automated manual transmission, meaning that it is a proper manual transmission with two computer controlled clutches, which change the gears. Again, the purpose of this transmission design is to save some fuel. The downsides, however, are many. One of the biggest problems with DCTs is that they can sometimes be quite rough, jerky, and fumble quite a bit when changing gears. Kind of like a brand new driver who's learning how to drive a manual transmission for the first time. And despite software updates, these problems can persist. And some automakers even claim that it can be normal vehicle operation, which is pretty crazy. These problems can lead to premature transmission failure, which has been a common issue on many vehicles with DCTs, such as those from Hyundai, Kia, 
even Volkswagen, Ford, and others. The other major problem with DCTs is that they are extremely complicated. They're very difficult to repair and work on, and many transmission specialists will just not work on them. Again, a failure means you are looking at a full transmission replacement, which can range anywhere from eight to $10,000. If you have a vehicle with a DCT, make sure to change the fluid every 30,000 miles or 50,000 kilometers to be safe which is usually an easy drain and fill procedure, just like a regular manual transmission. But the safest thing to do is to avoid buying a vehicle with a DCT to begin with. They can be great for sports cars where that fast shifting can really be a benefit, but for regular everyday vehicles, definitely not, which is why I'm giving the DCT a D rating. Okay, moving on to the next type of transmission, which is going to be a lot more familiar to most, and that is the conventional torque converter automatic transmission. This is the traditional automatic transmission which vehicles have been using for many decades, and in many ways, it remains one of the best. Traditionally, these transmissions came with four speed or five speed configurations, but on the newer vehicles, six speed, 8-speed and even 10-speed automatic transmissions have become the norm. Compared to a DCT, a torque converter automatic is much smoother to drive. Gear changes are often seamless thanks to that torque converter. They can be just as fuel efficient and best of all, reliability and repairability is often much better. Most of them are fine with a fluid change interval every 60,000 miles or 100,000 kilometers. And when they do have problems or fail at higher mileage, parts are more likely to be available and transmission shops are more likely to be able to repair or even rebuild them. Now, the reliability of conventional automatic transmissions is really all over the place and it really depends on the brand. Some can be incredibly reliable, such as the ZF made eight speed automatic that's used on many different vehicle brands. Also, Mazda's six-speed automatic is another excellent example. And then you have some that can be problematic, such as Ford and General Motors' 10-speed automatic that's used on many trucks and SUVs. So regular automatics are not a sure thing and not always the best. It really depends on the vehicle and brand. But in general, they are one of the safest automatic transmissions to go with, which is why I'm going to give it a B plus rating. But there is one other type of automatic transmission that is far superior, at least from a reliability standpoint. And that transmission is the eCVT. The electronic continuously variable transmission or eCVT can be found on certain hybrid vehicles including many Toyota hybrids, Lexus hybrids, Ford hybrids, and Subaru hybrids. Honda also markets their hybrids as having an eCVT, but really their hybrid system doesn't really have any transmission at all. The real eCVT, which is used on the other hybrids I mentioned, consists of a planetary gear set, essentially a group of metal cogwheel gears which manages and transmits the power of the engine and hybrid motors to the wheels. The key takeaway with the eCVT is that this is easily the simplest, most robust, most reliable automatic transmission in existence. It is near failure proof. It will easily last the life of the vehicle and essentially buying a hybrid with an eCVT means that you will likely never even have to think about the possibility of a transmission failure. In fact, transmission failures are practically unheard of. That's just how reliable the planetary gear set eCVT is. A simple drain and fill fluid change every 60,000 miles or 100,000 kilometers is more than enough for an eCVT. And you could even stretch the interval longer than that. Some say that hybrids add more complexity, but in many ways, they actually take away complexity and improve reliability. And the eCVT is one of the best examples of that, which is why I have to give the eCVT a solid A rating. And with that, that brings us to the final transmission type, 
which of course is the good old manual transmission. A rare transmission in this day and age. Shifting gears yourself with a shifter and clutch pedal seems archaic these days, but the manual has a lot of benefits and no major downsides, unless you consider shifting gears to be too much work. Next to the eCVT, the manual is the simplest type of transmission in existence. There is not much to them. They are repairable, rebuildable, and as long as you change the fluid at a decent interval, say every 30,000 miles or 50,000 kilometers, it should last the life of the vehicle without failure. That's assuming you know how to shift gears properly and are friendly to the clutch, in which case there should really be no problems. And as a bonus, a manual transmission is a great anti-theft device that car thieves stay away from. So like the eCVT, I have to give the manual transmission a solid A rating. So there you have it. Now I hope you found this information useful and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more videos breaking down the different types of car features and technologies and which ones are reliable, which ones you should stay away from, let me know in the comments. And make sure that if you are planning to purchase a vehicle and you live in Ontario, know that OMVIC is the vehicle sales regulator that's responsible for administering and enforcing the rules that dealerships must follow. To learn more about your consumer protection rights, make sure to visit OMVIC.ca. And if you need any additional car buying advice, recommendations, or help of getting a great deal on your next new car purchase, make sure to visit CarHelpCan.com. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.